Hey guys, real quick before we start the video, I want to direct you to the community tab on my channel. I am currently running an event for you, the viewers, to rate every single Monster Hunter Monster from 1 to 5 stars. This project is going to be a bit of a run back from the 20th anniversary popularity poll and is meant to allow everyone to voice their opinion on every monster, so we can get a big picture look at how the whole community feels about the entire Monster Hunter bestiary. There will be a new poll on the community tab every single day at noon Eastern Standard Time and all polls will remain live on the channel, so you can answer any of them at any time you will not miss out if you miss the poll for the day. I will be updating numbers all the way from now until the end of October when the last polls have been run, and in October or November, we're going to have a massive video event where your comments will be read, all the numbers will be crunched, and the monsters will be reordered based on how you all voted. Every vote on every poll matters, and anyone has a chance to have their comment read in the video itself. And if you want to help me get more data and reach the broader Monster Hunter community, I'd appreciate a like on this video and, you know, maybe hit the subscribe button to help this channel grow. It'll put me and this project in front of more more eyes. Okay, no more YouTuber CTA shilling. Here's the video you actually clicked on. Thank you. Hello! So, this is going to be something kind of, sort of, a little bit different. On my Patreon, and I guess this is a little bit of an ad for that, maybe, what I do is, at a certain tier, I release behind-the-scenes commentary voiceovers for some of the more heavily editing-involved, long-form, more complex content that I do. I really like doing those videos like this. For the sake of the 20th anniversary of Monster Hunter, kind of like a, the, the spirit of the holiday, let's call it, I decided I was going to put out the behind-the-scenes commentary for the 20th anniversary musical special I made on YouTube proper. Kind of promote the Patreon, yeah. And also, you know, for the for the sake of the Monster Hunter festivities. And as compensation for that, the guys over on the Patreon proper are getting three behind-the-scenes commentaries back-to-back-to-back, -to -back -to -back, pretty much. But yeah, no, so this is kind of a thank you for how everything's been going so far. Kind of just a celebration of Monster Hunter, because we're still kind of on that kick. And just a kind of a genuine desire to show off how I make my stuff and show off the process. And I kind of like talking about the things that I make just in general. So I, I find this kind of stuff very exciting to do. So I hope you find this enjoyable. And also, if you have not already, this is, of course, the behind the scenes for the musical history of Monster Hunter 20th anniversary special. If you haven't seen that video yet, and it's, you know, it's not the most viewed thing on the channel, so maybe you haven't, I would definitely recommend watching that first. And then we can go back through and I can talk about the design process that went into things and the editing and all that goodness. Also, I'm just very happy with that video. I'd love to see it continue to do well. So any and all support on that and this and everything else, very much appreciated. Thank you so much. So let's get into the video proper. So I have three different things pulled up. I have the video editing chunk, the music editing chunk, and then the full video compilation together. And we're just going to view whatever is going to be the most useful for whatever I want to be talking about. So let's actually start right at the beginning of things. And I think I want to talk about the music angle first. So when I was planning this project, there was a fair bit of debate in my mind how exactly I wanted to start it. If I wanted to cut straight into Monster Hunter 1 and go from there, if I wanted to do kind of an introduction of sorts. I had in my head, from the jump, the idea of kind of the the showcase of flagship monsters that I have right in here. So this chunk we'll talk about in a bit. And then stuff with like the big bosses and whatnot that I have right down in here. So I had this in my mind, but the question that I had was, do I want to kind of like flow from Monster Hunter 1 into this or flow from this into Monster Hunter 1? And then what music is going to help me get across that feeling that I want? Eventually, I settled on intro and then go into the games. So for the intro, I picked a track called The Time Has Come. May not have heard of it because it is a track that is paired with, I believe, the original E3 trailer for the first Monster Hunter game. So it's not actually like in-game soundtrack though it is a mix of the Kokoto Village theme that transitions into another piece of music. What I was going for when I was making this and like selecting the music for this piece was there are like big well-known hits that you kind of have to get in here, but I also kind of wanted to go for pieces of music that I thought were really, really good, but not the most famous parts. I wanted to have a bit of a variety of very overtly famous and kind of underrated tracks in here. So the time has come is quite perfect for me. I'll just play it a little bit. So 
So it comes in with the Kokoda Village that you already know. Everyone should be familiar with this. Kind of feels like it'll be leaning into the original Monster Hunter. And then with this track is it goes from the track you know into this. So it starts out kind of look like it's going from Monster Hunter 1 and then it moves into a showcase of villages. So it goes to Jumbo, into Poke Village, it'll go into Moga after this. So the editing is almost a tad deceptive because you think you're starting off with something that you know as the introduction to Monster Hunter and then we're kind of cruising through the history proper. So we go from the villages and we go from the maps. And this was one where I was kind of realizing, oh, there's a lot of just like forested intros. I can probably should kind of uh, spruce things up a little bit. Yeah, so it goes from forests and hills, snowy mountains, and then back into deserted island, and then ancient forest starts off, and then shrine ruins, and then ancestral steep. So there's a lot of for I was just recognizing it's a hell of a lot of forest maps that start off the Monster Hunter games. I got to start throwing in a couple of other maps just to just to kind of spread out the biodiversity around here. So that's why the dunes from four is just kind of smacked in here. Even though Ancestral Steep has uh, art design to it that's pretty atypical from a lot of the other forest maps. This chorus is especially what I wanted to play around with. I thought this was so strong. And now we get to one of my favorite edits. All right, let's talk about that bit. I loved constructing that bit. So obviously, this music is. I the chorus was so strong. Listening to this track for the per, for the first time. So I, at, the first time I heard this, I knew I have to play around with this. I need to do something with this. That is too good. Shocked I had never heard of it until I went specifically looking for Monster Hunter 1 music to edit into this track. So looking over the edit proper, I had the idea of, I know, I know what my start time is. I know where my stop time is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a whole bunch of monster cutscenes. Preferably, I want instances of them roaring because I think that just looks really good. And I'm going to just splice them over one another on different layers of the video editing. Let me raise that up for you. I think that's going to look much better. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That looks much better. So, have them staggered on different levels of the editing track with opacity built in just so that you can see them over one another. Real quick, I'm going to be talking about some stuff that I would have fixed and changed around had I had a little bit more time to work on this project. I had about 12 days to do this from top to bottom, from the inception of the music to the video editing. Unfortunately, there's a couple of things here and there that I feel like just were underserved in the editing, and this part, I think, is a little bit one of them. Not that I don't think that the editing is really cool, but as you can just kind of tell from eyeballing things, the staggering of the monster parts are rather uneven. If I were to do this over again, I would have counted how much time I had in between each set, taken the amount of monsters that I had to work with, divided that evenly, and have video clips that were evenly spread out and evenly spaced. Because you can tell, kind of just by looking, the staggering is very uneven. So, for instance, you have, like, just kind of downtime where there will only be, like, one monster on screen. So, like, Tigrex shows up. This is... How many frames does Tigrex have to himself? Six frames he has to himself, right? And then it'll... Uh, that'll cut between Kashala and Nargakuga right there. Then we get to this one. We see how many frames Narga has to himself. 
it's like 30. So Tigris gets like six frames all to himself. Uh, Nargakuga gets about 30 frames all to himself. You kind of see what I'm talking about here is that there's just, if you go and you look back at it, You can tell there's a couple of spots in there where one monster will have just an awkward amount of time all to itself, mostly right here. I think with Nargakuga, I too, too much space. I also kind of wish I didn't use I didn't use this cutscene where he's so far away, so you can barely tell why he's there. I should have used a different one there. But for a lot of these, like, you can see just kind of how much shorter and choppier they get towards the end there. So towards the back half, there's just a lot more movement and a lot more energy here. I specifically really love the gore one. I even wish I could have dragged Gore out a little bit. Just kind of like that close-up on his face with the roar and the transitions between the two other monsters. Yeah, no, I think that was like a really good instance, a really nice shot. So yeah, no, some, uh, I do still ultimately love this edit, but I do think an extra layer of, uh, an extra layer of organization would have done it really well. Then the track in of itself comes down. So it mellows out. I do this mellow out to do kind of like these introductory lead up bits to the cutscenes for some of the big bosses. So I go with Lao, go with the Latrion, go with Dyer, a little bit of Guy's Magorm, White Fatalis. Music ramps back up. Comes back to some of the biggest, baddest enemies that Monster Hunter has. A lot of the final bosses, which are just as synonymous with some of their games as the flagships of those games. And of course, you cap it off with that guy. You bring it into Monster Hunter proper. Loads in into the original Monster Hunter. I felt I felt like these dates were a cool little bit to add in. I went for the Japanese release dates for all the games, as I felt like those are like the proper release dates of when the game came into the world. You know what I mean? The challenge there was there are multiple instances where I kind of have to cheat a little bit. Where, especially when Monster Hunter is starting to get a little bit popular, a little bit bigger, and a bit more money into it, you kind of get into the realm of spin-offs and other games and whatnot like that. And what can kind of happen there is I'll have, say, Monster Hunter try... Monster Hunter Rise comes out in a certain date. And then in this video, I want to go Rise into Sunbreak for the sake of storytelling for that matter. But... In the reality, in timeline, Rise comes out, then Stories 2 comes out, then Sunbreak comes out. And I felt like that kind of choppiness would kind of detract from the video itself. So I do do these dates. I like having these dates in there just to kind of mark the progression of history. But ultimately, they are a little staggered out of order due to the release dates of certain spinoffs and how they kind of clash and collide with the release dates of main games and expansions. Also wanted to just hang on to it, uh, hang on to the shot for a little while. Okay, so let's talk about all this stuff. So, Lands Full of Harvest, that's the introduction to the forest and hills. It's kind of like a nice, it's a very, it's a very memorable piece. It is something that, you know, you load into the first map and the first Monster Hunter, and that blares out as like an introduction to the map proper. And then that flowed very well into the old jungle theme. <laughs> Yeah, because this one has a nice bit of a fade out to it, so I could kind of just lead into whatever I wanted. Old Jungle Theme was a very natural choice for this video. It's, though simple, I think it's a very effective map theme. It's more or less Rathian's character theme as well. And it is, I find, very synonymous with old classical Monster Hunter. The percussion behind it has just a lot of movement and kinetic energy behind it that really drives that track. It feels like a chase, like a pursuit. Something's uh, chasing after you. And there wasn't really much of first-gen Rathian to work with. So 
we go with, I took an upscaled version that I found of the original intro for the original Monster Hunter. And like the Rathalos Chase intermixed in fits what I'm looking for very well. And then after that, after I have that little bit, we're going to get into a very common trend in this video, which is I need footage. I don't really want gameplay with HUD and whatnot. I want something with a little bit more of a cinematic presentation. So we're going to be going with a lot of trailer footage. So gameplay trailers, E3 trailers, cinematic trailers, all this kind of stuff is a lot of padding, more or less, to kind of let the music do its thing. But, you know, trailers are... For, ga for gameplay trailers like this, what are they but movement and action set to music anyway? Like, that's kind of what trailer footage is built for. So naturally, it fits very well into this kind of project and just kind of fits the pacing. It was mostly just a matter of making sure that the video and trailer footage that I was picking totally matched with the music that I was using. A lot of monster intros used, too. So, like, the desert theme pops in and we cut to the Monoblos intro. Yeah, Monoblos is a very important monster for the original Monster Hunter. He has actually a fair bit of background and story to him along with one of the major characters from the original game. So I felt like giving Monoblos a showcase in the MH1 section was going to be kind of important for him. Pretty fitting right there. And then, so let's kind of talk about the actual transitions of the music real quick. So a big, 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 big part of getting this video to work was going to be transitioning one piece of music into another, R trying to recognize where two pieces of music kind of talk to one another that I could get them to communicate and filter from one into the other, how much fade in and fade out I want to put on a certain piece to go from one chunk into the other, how harsh or how gradual do I have to apply that fade, which parts and with which instruments can I use two pieces of music to kind of communicate to one another and very naturally naturally flow from one chunk into another. I use like percussion into percussion a lot. I use strings into strings, flutes into flutes, vocals into vocals. A lot of the times it worked. A lot of the times it didn't. A lot of, most of the time, I think I was able to get it to hit very, very well. There are other times where I, f I feel like, oh, this is just like a fade into a fade. Like it doesn't sound horrible, but it, it really didn't go super well. It wasn't super natural. Some of these musical transitions I find to be much more inspired than others. Like this one in particular, this first major one I had to do, it's just kind of a fade into a fade, right? That's fine. There's nothing particularly special about there. One goes out, the other one comes in. This one I like a lot more, just kind of um, to give an example of two tracks that kind of talk to one another. So yeah, so Old Desert going into Lao. If I had to do that over, I might have pushed Lao in to come in maybe like a smidge earlier. But what the Old Desert theme does is you have like the vocals and the drums and it's going higher, 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 higher. And then Lao comes in with just this nice big boom hit cuts right off out of the, um, it cuts that ascending note off and then goes right into Lao. So it's right as the old desert theme is, the note is going up, it's about to go down, but it's, uh, in the old desert version, it comes down a lot more kind of gradually, has like a bit more of a fade to it, and then what Lau does is it comes in with that heavy percussion, boom, and goes right into its music. Yeah, so I love doing that. And then with Lau, I went with just the first generation Elder Dragons. This is a video that is also making me interested in getting some 4K upscaling tech for myself. Uh, I looked into, I, there was a free one that I found, but the process of updating any video into 4K was going to take astronomically too long. 
It's never going to get out there. There's a lot of footage in this video that, you know, it's just, it's compressed footage into compressed footage into compressed footage into compressed footage. And like, I, I want better for my stuff. I gotta, I think looking into something that can bump things into 4K is an investment, is an investment I'm going to want to make. That's probably going to be a monetary investment that I'm going to have to look into. But yeah, no, especially like, like it, it's like this Kieran footage. It's all right in motion. That's fine, it's kind of foggy. Yeah, no, that's mega pixely. Hey, you can tell what it is when it's moving, that's fine. But it, yeah, and that's that looks cool too. But like with with a lot of these classic Monster Hunter clips and cutscenes or whatever that are now 20 years old and ripped off of the PSP and the PS2 and then compressed into 1080 and then I took them, compressed them into 720 and then that gets brought up into 1080 again and all that crap and whatever just kind of really kind of muddies a whole bunch of stuff. And um, I, I'd, I'd like better. I might, if I can get my hands on something, I might do like a 4K upscale remaster for this video at some point in the future and re-release it. All right, so yeah, then the Lao Shan Lung theme. So Lao goes pretty good. I take that. I transition this bit into Yan Garuga for freedom and for G. So I comboed Freedom and I comboed G together. I, f freedom is kind of a, a portable port of G with a couple of differences on it, so they match pretty well together. A lot of the trailer footage and cutscenes and whatnot are universal between the two. I went looking, couldn't really find a lot of music that were specific to Monster Hunter, uh, Freedom, and G that the original didn't have. The biggest one is the theme of Yan Garuga, who's like the big monster who comes in in Freedom and is... Kind of like this flagship monster that never was. Has his own battle track with him. Kind of a big deal. So I get to use him a lot. And he's basically the anthem I use for G and Freedom put together. So because it's his theme, I use the bulk of his cutscene. And then I go into the intro for Monster Hunter G, as I think this is a really cool one, with like the suiting up and a lot of showcases of the hubs and towns and whatnot. I've always really liked this particular intro. And then when I was looking for gameplay off of trailers for the Freedom and G parts, what I wanted to do... What I wanted to do was to get as much footage of subspecies as I could. Because subspecies were a big, big selling point of freedom. That they were going to take the monsters, recolor them, change them around a little bit, create all these different variations and versions out of them. Alright, so a little bit of story to this particular part of the video, this ending of the first generation section is unfortunately so one thing i had i did preemptively before i actually put this project out there was i made uh, i took this video edit and i exported it and i uploaded this privately to youtube by itself to run it through the automatic youtube copyright bots got a couple of claims on it unfortunately and interestingly and even kind of fortunately all of the claims that i got were of different versions of proof of a hero not all of them and not every chunk of the ones that got claimed but um the front half of the original proof of a hero from monster hunter one this one particular middle section from the generations ultimate one and the entirety of proof of a hero from monster hunter 4 all got claimed so there's a couple of chunks of Proof of Hero missing and a whole version of it that was going to be in this video that's missing. That is why only like this little back chunk of Proof of Hero from Monster Hunter 1 plays. <laughs> Yep, 
yeah so you only get a small chunk of this because this is the chunk that youtube didn't want to automatically copyright claim i'm not particularly sure why proof of a hero gets snagged so much i it might be that proof of a hero is used in some form of promo material and like there's something input somewhere that they kind of think that you might be using some kind of like chunk of marketing that you're not supposed to use or something i don't know why why specifically like these bits of the soundtrack and almost zero other portions of monster hunters ga in-game soundtrack uh are manually targeted by youtube so input there by capcom to be claimed no idea why but that's kind of what happened. That is why this gets uh, kind of stumpy right here. So moving on to this part right here, I want to talk about kind of like the overarching design process of this whole video now that we're in kind of this transition phase right here. So when I was creating this music musical piece i was kind of i kind of had the mindset of taking it in these like musical movements and almost kind of plotting it and planning it like i was planning a show like a concert and i was doing a, a musical history of monster hunter concert so very often if i have if i want to go from like one chunk of games into another chunk of games yeah like one generation into another generation or into a spinoff or whatnot i'm looking for tracks that can ver that have a natural Natural transition outwards so usually i'm looking for main themes or credit themes tracks that have a definitive ending and aren't so much on a loop or if they are on a loop have a point in that loop which is very very easy to cut out of because i i kind of planned it around the fact like okay if people are playing this like live say then you kind of want these points where the music kind of comes down fades out so that everybody can you know flip a page take a breath whatnot or just cool down for a second and then we leave into the next part so there's a number of these musical pauses in here because this is planned around being kind of like a concert that was the mentality that went in when i was making this also in a youtube sense very good to put the mid-roll ads in those particular spots because then it's not going to break up the actual pieces of music and because this is a longer video uh, quite a few mid-rolls get put in here so natural points for mid-rolls was act also a little bit of a consideration but the actual like artwork itself was kind of like a concert model so like this breaks down comes down here Just that, that nice, like, second or two of silence. And then it leads back in. There's a couple of different lead-ins. Some of them I wanted to be, like, very, very harsh, very, very big boom energy. And then, you know, depending on what music I had, others are much more kind of like it fades out, and then it slowly kind of comes back in. So that is especially what happens here with the main theme of Monster Hunter Dose, which is a very pretty piece. So with Dose's intro... Starting off with just like the gradual fade in of the logo itself with its date that comes in. The intro of the track is very, very peaceful. So I stuck with footage that was just kind of like low energy. I thought this one was really cool. So it's just the Wyverian up in the blimp looking through the telescope out over the snowy mountains. Kind of very pretty in the mundane nature of it right there in that video would have cut to the battle with the Blangonga, so then I cut to footage of Jumbo Village to kind of keep the lower energy going. Starts to build up with a fade to black there. And now we're going to lean into the combat scene into the cutscene. Time that explosion with the percussion really well. Really like that. So the Blangonga fight goes for a little bit. I kind of just let it run because it's a very cool cutscene in and of itself. And after I let this battle run for a little bit, we cut into the bit where Kashala interrupts this cutscene. Tease Kashala for a little bit, the whole wind powers and everything. You take the silhouette shots of him. Kind of nice little ramp up to his powers and whatnot. Give him that intimidating air.
So I do something a little bit interesting with Kashala that I don't do really for kind of any other track that we have here is I take Kashala Dora's theme and I play it borderline out of order. What meaning by that is I start right in the right kind of like towards the back third of his fight theme. And I wanted that more uh, horns relate that kind of like trumpet louder trumpet bit first. And then I wanted the more percussion and low brass bit to come in. So I actually play through the loop in the track, which I don't do with pretty much any other track in here. Yeah, so that's the start of the track right there. I don't do that with any other piece of music because I wanted what this theme offered out of order from the original piece of the music, which is the cool thing that I could use due to the fact that almost all these battle themes loop. And I wanted that kind of more percussion-y bit with the lower horns in there because I felt like the harsher percussion was going to work nice and well for Rajang's theme. Yeah, so low harsh percussion, low harsh percussion. This is also a transition I really like. So a lot of them, what happens is I'll have a track. It'll hit a point where I want the transition to happen. Where that transition is going to happen is immediately where the next track comes in. And then the original track is going to fade out. This is an inverse of it where I have Rajang's theme come in much earlier. So let me try and find on here. So the fade happens right here. Normally what I do for a lot of these transitions is Rajang's theme would also come right here right where the header is it hit right there didn't want that for this one i wanted rajang's theme to do kind of a gradual lead in reason i wanted a gradual lead in for that one is if i have a bit where there's like um a held note that i can work with where that held note will kind of build 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 and then it'll go maybe into like the main melody of the track I feel like that's a really nice trick i can use for a fade in so rajang's theme comes in like this So I can use that held note as the transition in of itself. So it builds in, it kind of like sneaks in while the other track is playing and gets louder and louder and louder, starts to overpower and boom, hits right where I want it to hit. And those kind of held suspended notes are really good if I want to do a transition like this because otherwise you kind of have two rhythms that are going to be smacking into one another. It doesn't usually sound particularly good, but just like one sustained note, that is a lot easier to work with. Another little bit about this is when I was picking out the music for this, if I was picking out a monster theme or a map theme, it was going to be the monster or map theme from the respective generation where they were introduced. Rajang's theme from Freedom Unite and Dose in second generation is not my favorite. I think the Iceborne version of Rajang's theme is the best version by about a mile. But this is the second generation where Rajang was introduced, we're going to use his version. So even if there were other versions of certain tracks I wanted to use, I always went with the version where they were introduced. I felt like that was going to be the most um just kind of genuine to the era also just kind of like a little a little gripe to point out is again talking about the footage that i had to use it was always a blessing if i could find some of the older trailers and monster intros in 1080 to use but there's some of them i don't know <laughs> Some people just insisted on watermarking monster intros. It's far less annoying in actual movement, can barely recognize it, but man, was it ticking me off when I was editing this. And then, all right, so this chunk's a little, there's a teeny little bit of indulgence here, right? Because Teostra's my guy. And you know, if you just kind of look at comparison for how long things play between Kashala and then Rajang, and then how long the Teostra themes, like this is one full loop. This is like the back third and the first third of a loop this is 
Probably like just the main melody mostly with a lot of like the middle part not used. And then I just use a full run of Teostra's theme. A little bit indulgent because he's my favorite monster for sure. But there's also actually a little bit of work that went into that. So Teostra's theme was actually pretty troublesome for me to use. Because I didn't want to hang on Dose for too, too long. I knew I had to get into Frontier. And I also didn't want to spill over into content for Freedom 2 and Freedom Unite. Like, I didn't want to take up too much away from those other two games, because I knew I had to get to those once I was done with Frontier. So I couldn't let Dose run forever. I wanted Teostra's theme in there. The problem was, is that Teostra's theme and the back end of the main theme of Monster Hunter Dose, which I was gonna use to close out this Dose section, were just arguing with one another. And as I tried for 15-20 minutes to get them to hit this very natural point of transition, and I just couldn't do it. I couldn't get a point where they were talking to each other. I couldn't get to a point where they were blending into one another properly. It just wasn't working. It was bugging me. It's like, I gotta get out of this so I th that I can hit Frontier. And it was like, it's like, one. it's like, it's like a, <laughs> you see that scene in a movie or a TV show where like someone hits a keyword in their internal thought process and then it like, it bounces around and echoes in their head and like, I got it, Eureka, that's it. Like that legitimately happened to me. I'm like, I need to get out of Teostra's theme so I can hit Frontier. Frontier. Wait a minute. Holy I have it. So, in doing this editing, it occurred to me that Teostra is the original flagship of Monster Hunter Frontier. Espinas comes in in Monster Hunter Frontier Season 2.0, and then he takes over as the helmsman. Teostra is the guy on the box art from day one. So it's like, oh, shh, I can use that. I can use it. Like, that's actually perfect. So that's actually why Teostra gets a full theme loop, because I wanted to wrap back around and use the drum line at the top of the loop. And I wanted to use that as kind of like this signal, then break it off really harshly, and then use that to kind of do an ease into Frontier. So what I wind up doing with the music is this. So let me mute this track real quick. So I have this bit right here. So you have the main kind of drum intro of Teostra's theme. So I took that, I duplicated it, and I ran it through Audacity, and I put some fade out effects and reverb on it to just have a cutout on the drums. Now you'll notice there's some editing on these bits. What unfortunately wound up happening when I was doing that kind of cut is there with the reverb and with the fade out, probably maybe I didn't cut things precisely enough, but there's this little like kind of tinny sound on the end here. Uh, I need to... You hear that? Let me hit these as well. Yeah, there's like a tinny sound added on to the reverb right there, which just doesn't sound good. I wasn't going to leave that on there, but I still wanted the fade on it because with a, just a card cut, it didn't quite sound as good. So I have a fade and I have a gain change on there just so it kind of washes out the tinny sound effect. But that creates a lot of silence and a bit of a harsh cutoff. So I'm like, what am I going to do to get the effect that I want? And the what I wound up going for with that is basically I just had it so that the video component does exactly the same thing that the audio component does. So that also has the gradual fade out on it as well. A little bit awkward. I, if that tin effect wasn't on there, I feel like I could. this would have been a little bit better. But, you know, I just having um, a consistency between the audio effect and the video effect, I feel like makes this as, as less awkward as I could make it. That right into the drum hit that goes for the Great Forest High Rank theme which most would associate with Espinas.
Now, a little bit of a fun fact for this chunk right here. For basically almost the entirety of the Frontier edit is that almost all of these cuts that you're seeing is all just one recording. I, I needed a whole lot of Frontier footage. I had a whole lot of monsters I needed to go over. I kind of wanted to just get a nice big simple block of stuff. So what I did is I found a YouTube playlist of all the Monster Hunter Frontier trailers. And I just set that playlist to go. I turned my OBS on and I recorded just the entire thing for an hour and a half. I went downstairs, I made myself food, came back up, still recording. <laughs> so every, almost, pretty much everything, probably from like here forwards with some alterations right in around here this is just one recording chopped up into a million little tiny pieces until we get around to here and then even this bit back here with um all this stuff is also the same video chopped up into a million little pieces but when i got to the shantian theme i knew that this part had to be special So this theme had to be in here anyway. This is one of the best Monster Hunter themes they've made. Yeah, so I want to do a showcase for some of the big, big, big dragons of the Monster Hunter Frontier G and Z era. So I went with Shantian, Disifiroa, Dure Mudira, and Guanzorumu. I thought those are probably make the most sense for like the big dragons you want to run. A uh, fun little fact in here, just of like a production note, is that Dure Mudira was initially not even going to be in this little chunk because in all the trailer footage that I have, he actually didn't appear. He was hinted at in like the G5 trailer, but they wanted to keep him secret. So I didn't have any good trailer footage of him. Like, f I need a fourth dragon, but I don't really have any good like cinematic footage. Eventually just went online, found some good stuff, and then just trimmed around the hut a little bit to make it look better. But yeah, no, so Dure almost actually wasn't utilized until I found some proper footage that just didn't have the hut in it. I, I thought about putting in uh, Harudo Murugu for this, but no. I was able to kind of get the footage that I wanted just by playing with things around a little bit. And I thought that Dure is probably a little bit more famous and a little bit more impactful and powerful than Harudo. So the Shantian transition is another one of those like gradual lead-ins that I really like to use. Uh, I went with, for the other two pieces, I went with the Highlands Higher Rank. So the one that is mostly associated with Kawada Sapusu, just because I think this track is amazing. This is an, an <clears throat> this bit right here is admittedly a little bit of lazy editing. Um, you go from the Abiorugu footage in one track to Abiorugu footage in another track. Probably should have cut in between the track splicing, but I didn't. Probably would have been a little bit better on that end. Yeah, so it's just it goes from bit of footage into bit of footage. So this is admittedly kind of a bit of lazy editing right here where I don't cut away from Abirugu in between the music bit transition. Yeah, so there's a musical transition, there's no video transition. It, it, that's That was lazy on my end, I'm gonna admit that. So yeah, no, I wanted just like the, that flute part in the Frontier Highlands version, I really wanted that. And then I just wanted to hit the Rebidiora theme. That transition works fine, but yeah, no, I really wanted this track in particular as I just love the, the heroism aspect to it.
Yeah, and then that hits the Shantien theme. This is another one of our kind of gradual lead-in musical cuts. This one was a little tricky to finagle, but I think I got it pretty good because we have the Rebbe Diora theme. So you have that theme has the, um, the, I don't know exactly the terminology for it, but it's just kind of like it goes, it's a note and then it goes one note higher and then one note higher. It holds on that, that kind of like escalation to it. And then Shantian also has... You listen to those tracks kind of combined. They both have kind of a, a shift in the note being held kind of around that at the same time. There's just kind of those uh, changes in the music that occur kind of in sync with one another. I think they sound pretty good together. Yeah, they're definitely, there's changes in the music. They're not 100% in sync, but they're kind of like relatively lining up with one another. Sound quite good. And then what I wanted to do here, so towards the end of this section, I wanted to kind of do a little bit of storytelling. So we have like the Zenith monsters come in, like right as the uh, Shantian theme's going. <laughs> And then off the Shantian medley that I had, there's this bit, which I think is the main menu or the file selection for Monster Hunter Frontier G, which is a remix of Shantian's theme with a bit of a more somber, kind of quieter edge to it. And I thought that would work really well for using a lot of footage of like just players in the hub. This was a lot of promo footage for the 10th anniversary of Monster Hunter Frontier. This 10th anniversary comes in right as the game is entering kind of it's like twilight years because it only lasted 12 years so it hits this big point uh when it's 10 years old and this is kind of right when monster hunter frontier z comes out and this is really kind of the beginning of the end for frontier proper so i felt like having this kind of more mellow music over all this kind of like sweeping footage of the people just enjoying themselves in the mmo would kind of have a, like a bittersweet edge to it And I had this really nice piece right here of all the monsters, like, kind of saying goodbye before they get immortalized into the 10th logo. And then right as that percussion hits, you have the Esmanaz coming back in, in uh, Sunbreak. So, I, yeah, no, you kind of have it like, oh, here's all these guys... So you have it like you have all these monsters, several like dozens of them that we met over the course of this game right before they kind of get immortalized in history. You know, you think they're kind of gone left to the history of Frontier and then that's going to lead right into like that drum percussion hit that's going to signal in uh, the return of Espinas. Go back to classic footage of him in Frontier, his classic gameplay. You cycle back into the brand new stuff. And I think the tone just hits perfectly. You have Espinas's intro with Teostra, the original flagship of Frontier.
And then this had to be slowed down quite a bit just so I can get the timing correctly, so it looks a little bit awkward, but whatever. Cap it off with Monster Hunter Frontier Z. Yeah, no, I am a big, big, big fan of this kind of small miniature narrative I was able to create. This kind of somberness of the death of a very long-lived Monster Hunter game. The most long-lived Monster Hunter game. These monsters kind of going away, and then just the unexpected return that we didn't think was going to happen, hits with the percussion, and then you have kind of like this swelling back up of a much more like triumphant music as Espinas makes a full return, signaling that there might still yet be a future for these guys. And I really, really like that. So then that caps out and it closes out Frontier. Back to what I said with like the full cut, and then we move into... So we have this... Cuts to the silence. And we move into one of the most nostalgic, one of the most homely, one of the most well-known pieces of Monster Hunter music out there. Anyone who has ever made a video essay on Monster Hunter has used the Poke Village theme. It's borderline oversaturated at this point, but man, is it effective. Yeah, so this is what I was talking about with the fact that, so Freedom 2, Freedom Unite, I think technically speaking, the original Frontier comes out a little bit after Freedom 2, I think. Uh, I think the dates are a little bit mismatched. But I go with Freedom 2 and Freedom Unite, very, very similar games, and Freedom Unite's an expansion off of Freedom 2, and this is back before the expansions got, like, their own separate narratives and their own separate themes and whatnot, so they're very package dealable. I like this little bit right here. I like this little bit right here where I kind of have this kind of going out on a quest type of bit before we transition into the Arctic Ridge theme. So the Poke Village theme plays out. And you hear that kind of gradual percussion coming in, kind of overlaid in with the Poke Village theme as we're building up to the battle theme. That's a nice transition. I really like that one. I like the rhythm that that one has. So that one comes in, and then I do something kind of interesting here. So musically, I wanted to play around with Tigrex. Tigrex is just kind of one of my favorite creatures in Monster Hunter. And I found a connection I could use between the two themes that I could play around with. So what I did, let me mute this track right here. So with the Arctic Ridge themes, I have these starting, I have these measures that sound very, very similar. Yeah, so I have that repetition right there, so I want to play around with this repetition. What I did was I took the intro to the Freedom Unite Tigrex theme, which has this gong hit into percussion. So I took that, and then I spliced that together with the repetition. So I have this as kind of like the impending Tigrex. I took that and then on a video front, so this is actually a little bit of cheating right here. Uh, this is from the intro to Monster Hunter Generations, the bit that shows off Gameth. This is Gameth waking up a Tigrex. But I have it is this narrative like, oh, you have these monsters like Giadrome, like Boldrome, like Kezu, these Arctic Ridge monsters to fit with that theme. And then interspliced in the middle of there, you have this kind of like oncoming monster that's just just kind of being teased and built up throughout the video. And then you'll go, yeah, no, there's Daimyo and there's Blank Ganga. And then, oh, no, nope, we're back to Tigrex. So let me play this proper.
And then Tigrex starts to slowly take over the full piece proper. And then we go into just like full power Tigrex. And the cool thing about Tigrex is there's a lot of Tigrex to work with. So there's just a ton of cutscenes of him chasing things down, killing things, fighting things. So I have a lot of Tigrex I got to play with for footage purposes. I actually want to run that uh, audio transition real quick because this is one I really, really liked. I catch him like right on a cymbal roll with the Tigrex theme. I think this goes right into one another super duper well. Kind of the nice harsh cut off into the Naga theme right off of it, like a off of that prolonged note and cymbal roll. Ah, that sounds really good. With Naga, I had a lot less to play around with than I did with Tigrex. So with the Naga bit, I use as much Naga footage as I can. I really only have like the one cutscene and a little bit off of the Freedom Unite intro that I can use. So this is where things kind of get filled in with just a lot of gameplay trailer footage. Yeah, so like Terra, there's Terra Shogun. Emerald Conga. Yeah, so this is the part where I kind of have to use footage to fill things in, because I don't have as much of the main monster that I want to use. Man, that does not look good. Yep, just kind of filling in gameplay footage at this point, just to let things go. But for the main impact, I wanted to bring Nagakuga back in, so I saved this bit of footage where he's hunting. Yeah, so right there what I did is I took that same uh, fade out and reverb effect I was talking about, and then it slapped it right on that, uh, like, that woodwind trill on Nagakuga's theme to get just, like, a nice, like, soft play out right there. Like that ends just kind of, like, I guess ninja e for him. And then what we do is we transition in to Monster Hunter Try. Now, thankfully, this is one of the proof of the heroes that was not copyright claimed. So I can just run with that and use it with the intro cutscene to Try, which is a super good intro cutscene. Hit the logo right on that major impact. And as we transition into the Deserted Island battle theme, that's where we're going to hit laggy and underwater. Another musical transition. I really, really like how this one came out. Love that one. Yeah, so that goes into mostly underwater stuff, shows off Laggy, a lot of what he can do. And then I just have some stuff that plays over for bits of the Flooded Forest battle theme and uh, Tundra battle theme, because those both had chunks about them that I really, really liked and wanted to include. Another batch of transitions that I quite like.
Kind of weird to use a Latreon for this instead of Barioth because this is Barioth's theme. I originally considered using a Latreon's theme for this. Couldn't find a really good spot to use it. Might use it for something else, something later down the line. But yeah, no, I also just felt like the pacing of a Latreon's intro cutscene with this music just worked kind of nice. Especially that spin with that piano bit, I thought it worked really well. So we break down, we leave the main battle themes, and I took two pieces of music from Locklack that I really liked. So I used Locklack B Eternal, and then Cazador del Monstrujo. So I tied uh, Lock Lock Be Eternal with Moga Village, even though a different piece of music built for a different location. I felt like the very, very calm element of Lock Lock Be Eternal still fit with Moga Village really well. Also, there's a bit with Cha Cha dancing that I saw, uh, I synced up with music that I really liked. Yeah, I just thought that looked really nice. I like that. Uh, yeah, no, then we'll go into uh, Cazador del Monstruo. So I, I matched Cazador up with, or Cazador or whatever, with Lock Lack pretty well. What I wanted to do, musical transition-wise, and I couldn't get to work quite as well as I imagined, is Cazador de Monstrujo has a, kind of like a Spanish guitar edge to it, and there's also an acoustic guitar element to the Portable Third Arena theme. So I was like, ooh, I could like match uh, acoustic guitar up with acoustic guitar. I got the transition to sound fine, but not really because the instruments were very harmonious with one another. Yeah, no, I was thinking, like, guitar into guitar would be really cool, and it didn't really work. It sounds fine. <laughs> Wasn't really the effect I was dreaming of when I concocted this transition right here. What did come out really good, though, is this bit. Just watch how the paw slam transitions into the logo. Oh, I nailed that. <laughs> it's simple, but that came out really good. Just the way the, the video transfers into another video and like how that syncs up with the music. It's simple, but ah, oh, dude, it's good. The Portable Arena, the Portable Third Musical Arena theme was definitely one of those tracks I was talking about where this isn't like a major village theme or main game theme or proof of a hero or boss theme. It's a, it's an arena theme. So it's definitely not one of those like super duper well-known tracks out there, but it's like, I, it's so good that I have to use it. I think it's probably the best arena theme out there, probably. Like, that sounds amazing. This was another transition that was a little wacky to get into, but I think I managed to pull this off pretty well. I wanted to go the arena theme into the Zenogar theme, and I had two kind of like woodwind bits I could work with. So I have right here. So you can tell it's going to hit right on that bit right there. And then, yeah, no, I have the... Uh... So you can hear the two bits of woodwind. Obviously they sound kind of differently, so it's not the most natural thing in the world, but I think I, I got it fine for what I got. Yeah. 
maybe a little bit of time finagling could have got that a smidge better. Um, okay, so this is an interesting bit right here. So I definitely know I want to hit the Yukomo Village theme. It's a very, very big part of Portable Third soundtrack. Uh, very iconic, very well-liked piece of music. It is so, so different from a lot of the other major tracks that are in Portable Third. There's a lot of energy in these bits. A lot of, because, you know, I have a track that sounds like this... And I have a track that sounds like this. And I have a track that sounds like this. So this was an interesting experiment in trying to kind of like land a plane, I would suppose, where I need to try and look for pieces of music that can serve as kind of like transition pieces from very, very high energy to very, very low energy. I need to find these pieces of music that are going to help me kind of like steer things up and steer things down so it's not big, 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 and then really quiet. So that's kind of where Misty Peaks theme comes in, because this one is still has a fair bit of energy to it, but is not as nuts as those last two. So this is this nice little kind of musical middle ground that I have, where I can go from Zenogre into this, into Yukimo, and have it kind of work. Because this is, it's like a little bit of a ramp down. It's, it's still a high energy battle piece, but it doesn't have like these, this big ass orchestra and an electric guitar going. It's a lot more kind of reserved, a little bit more uh, like Japanese instrumentation. And then the Yukimo Village theme is very heavily Japanese instrumentation. So then I can kind of just like work. I, it's a nice gradual kind of like work down of the music that I can move into this other section that I want to do. Yeah, and this was like uh, this was like a strings into strings transition right here. So you can hear that, and then that I paired with. Yeah, so strings into strings works fine. Yeah, it's okay. But yeah, no, that's uh, that is a big thing for Misty Peaks being here. It's it's like I said, it's kind of like trying to land. The this plane right here and then try to get it on this ground. So that was cool to think about. I'm trying to think of getting a piece in here because I want to go from one song into another song. That's not really going to work. How can I? It's going to expand things, but I need another track in here to bridge a gap. So Yukimo plays out, and we're not quite done with third generation yet. It's going to go into the Port Tanzia theme from Three Ultimates. So this is going to fade out. Yeah, not like a, it's not like a full like section break with some of those others, but I just needed to kind of like go a little bit quiet and then just kind of ease into the next chunk. We're still in third generation and then Port Tanzia is going to go into Brachidios. This one works pretty well for me because um, Brachiodios has a nice kind of like easy ramp up while Port Tanzia has a nice uh, ramp down. So it's just kind of go down, 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 and then up, up, up. It's it's this nice little valley that can I can bring back up. Yeah, Bracky's theme doesn't start too loud right from go, so it works nice when uh, transitioning out of a quieter theme like Port uh, Tanzia. And then this was an interesting choice, right? So the credits for Monster Hunter Try, there was a debate back and forth in my head on whether or not to use this or to use the main theme of Try, that being to one with life. 
That was an argument that went back and forth in my head. The ultimate conclusion was, I already had the proof of a hero from Try. It's similar in like its instrument choice to to One With Life. It, it has a similar enough soundscape that I already have a track that kind of sounds like it's within this vein. So I'm going to take the Try credits theme and use that instead of To One With Life as the definitive ending for Third Generation because I have these two tracks that have a, a, a fade out ending to them that I can use to cut out this section one sounds less similar to another track that I had in the video. Also, I just wanted to use music from the uh, Sedeus medley just kind of in general. So we're kind of moving into that right in around here. Yeah, so Brachidios runs... I badly wanted to use music that sounded like this. I Cedius's music and the credits most more or less just use Cedius's music and change how the how it's composed a little bit, but you know, very similar vocals, very similar instruments and whatnot. Uh it, beautiful, beautiful music. I thought worked perfectly. And I went to go with just kind of like the big tri dragons, so Sidious, Jean Moran, and Dia Morales. <laughs> Even though Dyer doesn't quite fit the um, kind of like regal, peaceful vibes, I feel like it kind of matches the legendary vibe to it. <laughs> then we kind of, we go into more stuff with Jen Moran. And I like how we fade out here. Very kind of feel-good cutscenes, like victory over Jen Moran, Sidious going free out into the ocean, over the sunset. And a nice fade to black there. And then an interesting choice was made to go with the... File selection screen music for Monster Hunter 4 for the introduction to that track. There's something I really like about that uh, melody. You know, it is the, the Monster Hunter 4 melody, but kind of like slowed down a little bit and a little bit more, I don't know, controlled. And I felt like that was just kind of like the nice introduction to a section. Show a little bit of the intro to 4. Bring up the 4 logo. Probably could have picked some slightly different footage for that, I suppose. But this comes up into the logo for 4. And this transitions quite nice into the Valhabar music. Hit it with uh, percussion into percussion right there. Yeah, no, and I more or less just let the Valhabar cutscenes and, like, the intro to 4 rock for a little while. Let that go. I pull up a cutscene I really, really like of, like, the caravan out in the sunset starting to traverse. This is another one. If I had a... If uh, I went back and I were to do this one again, what I would have done while the Valhabar theme music is playing is I would have just, like, intercut in between cutscenes of them kind of traveling and going on their adventure and then, like, all the villages that they hit. I probably would have chopped this section up a lot more if I were to do this over again. And then I a little bit of also lazy editing right here. I kind of let the uh, Valhabar music hang for a little bit right before we get into the Ancestral Steep music. Yeah, the, uh, the editing timing on that's not particularly great. So then we monster montage through the Ancestral Steep music until we hit the Monster Hunter 4 main theme.
All right, so this is a bit I do not like about what I did here. So, the main theme of Monster Hunter 4, right at the ending of it, has this part that kind of goes a little dark. Kind of like a, a bit of intimidation on that right there. I wanted to transition that into the sound, uh, into the music for Gormagala. So it's, it's kind of like hitting that darker patch of music right there going into gore. All right. So that sounds fine. That's kind of cool that those two bits work together fairly well. But I also wanted a couple of other things. So I wanted that kind of dark patch to hit right as the shadow of gore kind of eclipses things. So gore lands as that dark bit is going. So I have it set for the clip uh, of video to start at that certain point. So gore, sh gore shows up in that dark part in the main four theme. I also wanted this bit right here. I wanted to cut off at that bit to sync up with this chunk of music. So that uh, series of drum hits. To go into transition into that. To have my cake and eat it too. To have Gormagala come in on one section of music. And to have this part on another section of music. The footage had to be set that up. To about like 1.3 times speed. And there's chunks of it that just don't look good. That looks, that is way too fast. That looks kind of bad. <laughs> like, uh, what I really should have done is just, um, cut it so that the dark theme is with Tigrex instead, and then Gormagala shows up when he does. I should have just played this out at normal speed and just had the footage kind of backed up a little bit. Um, because I really like this. Like, that's fine to keep, but it comes at the cost of just how fast and spastic that looks. Not a big fan of that. So then Gormagala runs for a little bit and we transition from his theme into Shigaru Magala's theme as the metamorphosis occurs. Yeah, okay, so real quick on this musical transition, I'm going to pat myself on the back once again. So cymbal into cymbal right here. Love how that one sounds. That feels that like that just feels like it's a very natural transition one right into the other. Love how that one goes. And then for this bit, I really kind of just let the Shigaru Magala intro go because it's so good and it's so climactic and it works with the theme incredibly well. This big swell with the star wing pose looks super good. Yeah, so that comes to an ending, and then I play out the end of the Shigaru cutscene with just kind of like the ending of the main story cutscene from 4. So that goes for a little bit, and then I have like a cutoff, and then this will go into the one chunk that Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate gets, and that is Soregios. Chiefly the Soregios invasion.
Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate's chunk was a victim of the copyright claim stuff. So you see that we just have Seregios' theme right here. So, yeah. So I have the 4 Ultimate logo right there. Plays off of the intro from For You right here. We're just playing Seregio stuff because what was going to happen was after Seregios' theme, I was going to play the Proof of a Hero of 4 Ultimate, but that got manually copyright claimed. So I just went, all right, we're just going to do the Seregios Invasion. Let that play out and then we're going to move on. So that moves into Monster Hunter Explorer, which comes out in and around this period, in and around the midst of the fourth generation. I only have two tracks for Explorer, mostly because I didn't have a ton of footage for Explorer. Uh, a lot of the game, there wasn't really any like cinematic trailers, any cutscenes to really play with, and a lot of the uh, gameplay trailers for Explorer really focused on around the fact that it was a mobile game, so there was a lot of stuff about just like having it on the phone and whatnot. A lot of that didn't even look particularly all that great. So Explorer doesn't get a ton of time. It has, I think, its main theme and then the theme of uh, Nefugaru Modo or Nefgarmat, its flagship. Interestingly, there is a bit right in here that is also copyright claimed. So if you don't recognize this from the main video, it's because this was not in the main video. This whole section right here with a bit of extra bit of Nefugaramoto's theme got manually copyright claimed. And I don't know why this particular chunk of trailer from Monster Hunter Explorer was the singular bit of video that was bot claimed, but it was. So there's a chunk of music right here that is missing from the actual video. Yeah, not even going to show it, even though it's in this, like, whole editing thing. It might still be a risk to it. Uh, who knows? But yeah, no, but I definitely, I had to get uh, Nefu's theme in here because it is such a good piece of music. So that goes, that's all cool and good. I was hoping to get something like Moro do Muto or Eo Garudia in here, but I didn't really see any footage for them in trailers, so it just kind of closed out with uh, Frozen Barioth. And then we get into the Generations chunk, and this is a borderline whole production in of itself. So, uh, the Generations chunk is big, 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 big beefy. It is a compilation of the Generations Ultimate uh, Proof of a Hero split into three different chunks, interspliced between a medley of all six flagship themes. So, Glavinus, Asylos, Mizutsune, Gameth, Bloodbath, Diablos, and Volstrax. With just an absolute crap ton of gameplay footage interspruced in between. Yeah, so with Generations, thankfully, Generations is a mega super duper combat focused game. And a lot of the trailers were like, look at the hunter arts, look at the hunting styles, all this type of stuff. And it's just like miles and miles of gameplay footage that you can work with, which is great because that is what I needed for this because there's a ton of music I had to play with. I took the Proof of a Hero and chopped it up into three chunks, started out with it, ran the Faded Four themes, then uh, did kind of like a middle chunk breakdown with it, played the other two themes, and then capped off with that Proof of a Hero. So the musical edit looks like this. So yeah, it's Proof of a Hero, Glavinus, Gameth, Mizu, Aslos, then back to Proof, Volstrax, Bloodbath, then back to Proof, and then this Proof actually gets cut right here, because there is a quiet section right in this mid bit right here that also got copyright claimed in the musical check that had to go. So just transition, so there's just less of like a, uh, of like a cool down period in here. Yeah. 
yeah, so if you know this piece particularly well, you'll know what chunk of music is missing from this right here. But yeah, no, this was a fun one. This was a lot of fun to do, of just kind of creating a whole story in and around Generations with the music. The Faded Four medley was a lot of fun to do to get to work with um, with one another. So this one right here, I like kind of like the um, musical subversion we have right here. Like, it's supposed to be this very kind of nice lead-in um, on these very pretty strings, and then it just goes into, like, the big, messy, ugly, glavinous theme, which sounds really cool. So that's a fun one. Glavinous runs for almost its entire full loop, and then I found a really good place to bring in Gameth. Yeah, so that's like an impact on impact transition right there. Very easy for me to do right there. Kind of similar for Gameth into Mizu. And then Mizu into Asolos was one I've been thinking about for a good long while. Because I definitely knew I wanted to play around with certain bits of it. Yeah, because Mizu has like a nice harsh bit right here that I could use. Very kind of nice loud staccato notes right there. And then Astalos obviously also has like these lead into these nice big harsh notes. So I felt like the, um, the really big, loud, staccato impacts that these two themes have in these two sections kind of helped them play around with one another very well. This is also one of those more kind of like gradual transitions. Little less so. The the fade in on the Asolos theme is a little bit more harsh than I typically use for the fade transition ins, but it's still in there. And then uh, Asolos into the second part of GU is also kind of one of like those fade in ones. That one's playing off of two more prolonged notes and just having one transition to the other. Uh, one of my favorite transitions is this one right here. I, I could not have got that one better. That is dead on where it needs to be. Yeah, that is percussion and vocals into percussion and vocals. Dead on in the perfect slot. And then the, the two... Um, Vocals that are there work really well into one another. I uh, God, I love this one. One that I don't love is this one. This one was just kind of finicky and didn't really want to work super well. Couldn't quite get it to go and I just kind of dealt with what I had. It's another one of those subversion ones, kind of like the Glavinous into Proof of a Hero, where you kind of, you think the measure is going to go one way and then I do a hard cut. Didn't quite work out as well. Maybe there's like, just like a little nibble of a uh, musical note right there that doesn't sound quite as good. And I cut the Glavinous one a little bit cleanly. On a video perspective though, the Bloodbath bit has a chunk that I really like. Cause I just hyper focus down on the deviance in this section. So 
So that rapid montage, when I was looking at the Bloodbath Diablos track, I realized that I had music I could work with very, very easily. So the Bloodbath Diablos theme, that like big impact bit on there, has this pattern. It goes one, two, three, four, five, six, 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 seven, eight. Um, and so you have I have those three batches of six, and there's 18 deviants. So three and six is 18. So go back and like I'll play the the pattern real quick. So I took that and then as close as I could get get i took intro cutscenes and uh trailer bits for all the deviants and then lined them up to that rhythm i don't think it's uh quite 100 percent there like down to the frame but it's very very close And then Bloodbath's corkscrew attack to that nice harsh cut to black works really good with the end of the piece too. And then Bloodbath is another one of these pieces that also has a little bit of a fade out reverb onto it, just so that I can get just a nice harsh cut off on the end of that rhythm and then go right into the end of Proof of a Hero. Which sounds pretty good. So then, yeah, no, there's the cut in GU. That ends. And then we go into Monster Hunter Stories, the original one. Don't have too much to say about Monster Hunter Stories because I haven't played either of them and I don't know the music very well. I didn't want to do nothing for them. They're both pretty prominent chunks of Monster Hunter at this point. Like the, the stories kind of like sub-franchise is doing rather well and a lot of people really like them. So I definitely want to do the homage and the tribute. I just didn't have really any knowledge for them. Picked a couple of tracks that I thought were really nice and and made it so that the video I was playing over them synced up the best that I could get it. Like, uh, we had like another Tigrex chase to match with a battle track. Yeah, so stuff like that. I just wanted to make sure that I had stuff that was thematically matching up with one another. But unfortunately, other than that, I unfortunately don't have a ton to talk about regarding the story section just because, you know, it, it was very simply designed. I didn't really know what I was working with, so I just wanted to make sure what I was working with, the audio sounded nice, the video sounded nice, and that they were totally synced up. I did, however, uh, find a compilation of like all the monster super attacks and played a whole bunch of those over bits of music where I didn't have a lot of video to work with. Then we go into online again not a ton to talk about with here this is just more like i don't know the game super duper well i picked out a couple of tracks that i really liked and i made sure that the footage was totally succinct i don't have any kind of really crazy or complex edits here um, I just picked three tracks that I really, really liked out of Monster Hunter Online. Like, I really liked Sleepless Summer Night, which I think is just a hub theme. It's very, very chill, very, very relaxed. I matched that up with a bunch of footage of like the main hub of Monster Hunter Online and just kind of like casual goings on there. A lot of the fighting matches up with the Snowy Mountains theme from online, which I think is my favorite battle theme from that game. Yeah, and then I have 
I'm not sure exactly what the track is for. It's called Ties of Hunters. It's another track I really, really liked. Big kind of like bombastic theme with quieter section in there. Yeah, so this one comes in around... This is another one I had to find kind of like more quiet themes in here. This fades out, and then this is the part, this is the big one. This is the part that needs to be done right. So I went with Stars at Our Backs for the main track, as that is just an iconic bit of music for a world. Very nostalgic for a lot of people who started there. Very, very important piece of music for a lot of people. Uh, and I went with the E3 trailer for World as the introduction to World proper. As this it, that this trailer in particular, I come back to it a lot because I find it to be just a very important piece of Monster Hunter media and for what it was meant for the change in the franchise. Come with the in-game logo for Worlds. A lot of cutscene stuff spruced in there. And then we have another transition that I very much enjoy, which is this one. Going from the very beautiful stars at our backs and then finding a perfect moment to go into a very harsh and violent piece. Yeah, no, I think I nailed this one. So I go from that right into the monster montage, which is helmed by Nergigante. Though an Iceborne cutscene, I thought Bruner Nergigante snapping Shara's neck hit that uh, impact moment extremely well. Tease of what he can do with the dead Baroth. And then we monster montage. And this track has a lot of really good energy for that. A little bit more Nergigante in there to just compound things. Let him have a bit more of a showcase, then we bring in more monsters.
And I had to pick this dude's music. So I I knew when I was doing this, I had to go with Basil's theme in this because how iconic Basil is to the high rank of world, what he means, how just good and awesome his music is, and just what a phenomenal creature he is. So I found a really nice position where I could go from Nergigante into Basil. And then cutscene wise, I go for the one cutscene that uh, Basil really has, which is him fighting Runer Nergigante outside of the Guiding Lands. So it's kind of cool. I get to go from uh, Nergigante's theme into Basil's theme, and I have a cutscene where the two fight one another. So I thought that panned out really well for me. And then that prolongs the monster montage. <laughs> Yeah, so that keeps going on for a little bit. And then one thing I did for World that I didn't really do with the other games because of just how impactful the maps and the world of Monster Hunter World was is I montaged the maps. And to do that, I took the best map and theme in the game, which is, of course, the Rotten Vale. A little bit of a lazy editing here too, where I just kind of leave in them just talking for a little bit. And then, but then there's the Elder's Recess bit right there. Should have done that. Lazy editing. And then I cap off with Pride of a Nameless Hunter with just some gameplay footage of World from the Trailers. Another really awesome track for World. Then uh, Pride of a Nameless Hunter fades out, and then we bring in the theme of Iceborne. Yeah, so that bad boy comes in. We tell a little bit of a story with the music in Iceborne as well. So this is kind of like a nice gradual ramp up. So Succession of Light is this very calm, quiet piece. And then we ramp that up a little bit and we bring it into the Celiana theme. A little bit more energy in this one. And uses a bit of the uh, melody of Succession of Light too. So this one builds up a little bit and we're gonna build even more off of that. So Celiana's theme is gonna go into Horfrost Reach. And we go up another notch where we kind of hit like a nice cutoff in the Horfrost Reach theme. And then we're going to go into a trumpet flare that goes into Vilcana's theme. So 
So the cool thing about this, this is taken off of a Velcana medley I have. And um, so that like uh, flare of trumpets right in there. Not part of the main theme of Velcana. I think it's off of the defensive Celiana battle theme that transitioned the dude who made the medley transitioned it right into the main theme. So I actually got to like um, have a cool little effect with this where one set of music comes down and then it just rapidly comes back up with the Velcana music. And then with Velcana's music, we do a little bit more teasing in here. And we do another kind of something that I did with Tigrex with another lead up. So in here with Velcana's theme, we have some volume changes in here to uh, in certain softer parts of her music, I quiet down the music just even a little bit more. Ramps up, this one's kind of quick. This one's a little bit longer and quiets things down a, a little bit more though. You hear that comes down, do that again a third time. Yeah, so this is obviously a lead up to Safi Jiva. So this is the heartbeats of Safi Jiva's theme in there that goes from his ire state. Those are spruced in. And in the video portion, what I do is I start teasing in the oncoming title update monsters. Yeah, so you notice that I have the opacity turned down, the shots of some of the other big dragons like Safi Jiva and Alatrion. You see Alatrion's wing in that shot. Safi's Jiva starts to come in more full force. Takes over. Fades to black in here. And it goes into the cutscene for the siege. Uh, like the lead-in before you fully meet Safi Jiva. And then with this one. So I definitely want to do Safi Jiva's music. Fantastic bit of music. I did. I wanted to do more than just him. I wanted to have like all the title update monsters in here. Save for one, obviously. So I have this play out. And then I spruced in clips from Rajang. From Raging Bracky. From Stygian Zenogar. From Alatrion. And I try to do some sync ups in with like the big bits of music in here as well. Another one comes in right around here. Alright, so now we go into the Monster Hunter Rise fake out, and I have a problem with how I edited this one. So we have Sapphire the Emperor. Oh, 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 oh. 
And out of the explosion, there's a circular transition. I kind of wanted to make an effect of like the Palamute running through the Sapphire the Emperor explosion. I thought that was kind of fun. So it's a fake out. Starts leading into the proof of the hero of Monster Hunter Rise. And then we have smoke and fire starts to green screen in. Alright, so I love the Fatalis part, I don't like the transition. I don't like the musical transition, I don't like the video transition. So, what I should have done is take these green screen effects for the fire and the smoke, and either like, duplicated or tripled them, and have them go, uh, much farther backwards, and have the green screen transition and the video transition very much, much, much more dragged out. This one, it's way, way, way too quick. It's only just like... It's only a couple, it's, it's not even like a second long. It should have been probably be about three seconds long. And also, uh, I cut it in a certain way where like the smoke and the fire effect are there. And I didn't, uh, I didn't do the transition properly. So it's not Fatalis walking in. It's the cutscene of, uh, Aiden and the commander. And then Fatalis shows up here. I should have dragged this back so that, uh, Fatalis's head is in the smoke and the fire, which it isn't. I really screwed up that in transition. And I don't even think the musical one is all that particularly good. This one was one that I couldn't quite get to work as well as I wanted. A little bit too abrupt. There should be more build up there, honestly. Uh, yeah, no. So the transition in... Not great. The actual once that's once this like second of embarrassment is gone and out of the way though, Fatalis section is really cool. So this is not quite like uh, just the Iceborne Fatalis. This is a whole miniature history of the dude. And I wanted to go with the second phase theme from Iceborne, as I felt like it was a really good battle track that has energy that's built for a lot of like kind of quicker transitions so we get into the point where i'm like flashing between the different fatalities throughout history i feel like they sync up really well with the rhythm of uh phase two fatalis more than they do with phase one fatalis So you stick with the Iceborne Fatalis for a little bit to show off the cutscenes including him. And as we get to this battle part right here, we start going through the history. Cutting all the, ba all the way back to Monster Hunter 1. And giving the dude kind of just like this miniature tribute in the middle of the piece. Now the transition into Fatalis, I absolutely flubbed. The transition out, I think is great. So the drums of the Fatalis fade out. And then this one's a nice, this is what I'm talking about. A nice, long, dragged out transition to the flames of Fatalis in the background of the uh, Rampage artwork as the Rampage theme starts to fade in. Gradually takes over. And now we lead into Monster Hunter Rise. So that transition, I think, is awesome. This one got like, the, just like look at the difference between this block right here and this block right here. Should have probably been around the same. I don't know why I f flubbed that one so bad. That one is one of the more, one of the more disappointing things <laughs> that uh, is a part of this video, honestly. See, anything interesting to talk about with the music here? This was another musical transition I didn't really like. I couldn't get this one to work quite as well as I wanted.
I think I probably should have kept finagling with this one. I wanted this to be another uh, vocals into vocals, and I don't think I, I hit it quite at the right part. No, that comes in at the wrong time. You can definitely hear it. This one, however, I think works quite good. So you go from Magnum Allo's theme into Brave Hunters, which is the main hub theme for Kimura Village. I wanted this one because it has some like nice percussion in there that could match with the transition out of Magnum Allo's theme. Yeah, those two kind of blend pretty nice. Honestly, I probably would have had Magnum Allo fade out a little bit more gradually uh, just to kind of keep that in there because it cuts off a little quick. But I think this transition works quite well. And then this goes into the All Mother Narwa theme. That one's quite good. And then I use the All Mother Narwa theme to just go heavy in with the Storm Serpents. So I focus on their cutscenes a lot. This transitions into Proof of Hero for Rise proper, and I felt like um, on it, I felt like I owed it to this track to properly bring it back in because I used it as a fake out into the Fatalis chunk. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna bring the Rise Proof of a Hero back in, and I'm gonna play it proper. Use it with the Wyvern Riding trailer as that has, uh, that matches kind of like the gallivanting, very kind of adventurous feel that the Rise Proof of a Hero has. Yeah, so I let that track have its time in the sun. Then it has its own fade out. Fades out to black for a good long while, then we come back in nice and strong and heavy. So for this chunk, I went with Primordial Malzino, I went with Guy's Magorm, and then I went into the Proof of a Hero from Sunbreak. I just kind of, for Sunbreak, I want to just stew and like stick in the darkness, stick in the darkness uh, with Malzino and Guy's Magorm with the dramatic choir and the organ and the low horns and everything and just stick to how just like grim and gritty in comparison to other Monster Hunter games Sunbreak could be and just kind of uh, vibe in the gothic aesthetic of Sunbreak. A lot of stuff to do with Primordial, regular Malzino, and then into Guy's Magorum.
Yeah, so we transition into Guy's Magorm here. And just when it, we just keep it dark, we keep it heavy. I, I think I just really like that for Sunbreak. Just kind of sticking with the gothic music. We transition out of Guys Magorm's theme with the explosion that hits him. Bring that down, and then slowly bring in the proof of a hero of Sunbreak. And showcase that with mostly a lot of just like cutscenes and gameplay footage for this proof of a hero. Still, uh, still matches the same gothic aesthetic as Malzino and Guys Magorm's theme, but now kind of like a little bit on the lighter end, a little bit more triumphant as we transition ourselves out of Sunbreak. Found a good place to fade out right here. And then we find like a nice, uh, another nice music track to transition into as we go into Stories 2 to close things out. And you know, I gotta tell you, for someone who doesn't really know Stories 2 all that well, I gotta, the battle themes are really good. And this is a mostly uncut trailer, but it just has the energy and cuts within itself that really match with the pacing of this track. Really good stuff with this one. Bring in for Wings of, uh, <laughs> Wings of Ruin. Then for another piece of music, again, since I don't know stories too well, I'm like, oh, Nergigante has a big cameo in this game. I'll go with his cutscenes and his battle theme. That's a cool chunk of stories, too. And then we mostly just end with the main theme of Stories 2, which I really like the melody of the Stories games. Play more trailer footage over it. And then what I was looking for here was just a way to transition us into Monster Hunter Wilds. So I found a bit of music and a bit of footage that I thought worked really well for the transition. Hell yeah. So yeah, no, I wanted the music and the visuals for Stories 2 to, uh, I wanted to, like a nice fade to white, which I got a little bit of in a battle sequence. And I wanted to match that up with a bit of music that I would thought would go really well into the drum hit for the Wilds trailer. Which I think I got pretty damn well.
I knew I just wanted to play out this musical history with this track right here. Alright, so, this has been the making of the Monster Hunter 20th Anniversary Special, the musical history of Monster Hunter. Loved doing this project, dude. I thought this was a ton of fun. Uh, very proud of what I was able to get together in only about 12 days. As I talked about throughout this video, there's some stuff in here that, given the chance, would definitely have been given another once-over. I wish I had time to really polish down the final product, because there, there's stuff in here that is a little rushed a little uh, disorganized, a little lazily edited, but only so much. I think this video is at like 92, 93% of what it really could be, which is still quite good. And you know, you try to have a mentality, at least I do, of good enough is absolutely good enough, but then you want to recognize why it isn't perfect, right? You don't want to be ragging on yourself that you don't get it perfect, but you also don't want to be complacent in your errors and just let bad habits kind of accumulate because you want your work to be really good with the audio mixing and some of the video editing and definitely the, the resolution and the video quality that I, I don't adore coming out the gate with this. Like I said, I might do like a 4K remastered version of this at a later date uh, once I get my hands on the technology to actually do that. It's something to look into at the very least but yeah no thanks for checking this out with me thanks for uh watching me break down this massive project and talking about the ins and outs of it and some of the stuff that went into making it this was a really cool process honestly and one of the big things to kind of take away from it is just how cool youtube is as a tool to have you explore and learn new things just kind of unprompted you know if you have a vision if you have a sense of creativity and you want to just go and make stuff like this and i guess this is just kind of like generally applicable in that you know, you know, I wasn't trained to like program a concert. I was never trained to do musical transitions, to do video editing, to do any of this. Like this is all self-taught stuff that I did because I had a vision, a desire to make cool sh And that kind of pursuit of learning, of developing new skills, of expanding on the toolkit that I have as a person has been an awesome aspect of YouTube. And it's why I'd, you know, I'd recommend just kind of springing out and starting something and trying something to anybody, any kind of hobby that you're interested in, anything that's going to force you to kind of learn a skill on the fly. You know, you don't need a formal education for everything. I'm not formally educated on editing and all that stuff for none of your favorite youtubers are really so yeah no it's it's probably one of the coolest things about this job and it's why I'd, uh youtube if you have a creative bone in your body you know youtube is something a great place to flex it and even if you're not really trying to make money or be famous off of anything just kind of in general a good life lesson is to pursue stuff that's gonna make you it's gonna force you to learn new things i think that's just something great in general that's something that i definitely came across in making this project it's like yeah, i'm gonna take 12 days and program a, a video concert and it did and it came out pretty good came out pretty good so thank you very much once again for joining me on this this has been CR Volcanic or Connor I'll see you around shout out to all the patrons and special shout out to Nihilist Chimerax Dat Boy Doing Da Ding Sir Newt Newt Peaberry Stefan Kalneen Shaggy Grizzly Pico Plush and Daniel Delasarte thank you very much